The Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal initially called my plan Bidenomics. I'm not sure they meant it in a totally complimentary way at the time. <laughs> but guess what? It's working. No, it's not. <laughs> How many times do we get? We're, you got to play that clip because he's so delusional. It reminds me of the old guy from Poltergeist. Anyway, Biden brags about Bidenomics, but in reality, his policies have created never ending Biden inflation. Hardworking Americans are they're drowning in debt. I, I just saw a report actually now that people are the home foreclosures are, are, are going up or skyrocketing. Inflation is up over 20 percent since Joe Biden took office. And that is a conservative estimate. You break down the basic cost of living and the numbers, they are inexcusable. Just look at it right there. Food, gas, rent, you know, I mean, it's in, it's incredible how everything's gone up. Eggs, airfare, you, it, if we, we could go on and on and on. And if this is not the worst part, weekly earnings, they're down almost 4%. Taxes are going up. I know mine just did. For more, I'm joined by global business consultant Hillary Fordwich. Also with us, public finance economist for the Heritage Foundation, EJ Antoni. Hillary, let's start off with you first. Under President Trump, we barely had any inflation, less than 2%, right? And now there are reports of Trump considering something pretty interesting to help the economy if he's reelected. He's been floating the idea of getting rid of income tax and replacing it with tariff imports, uh, tariffs on imports. He uh, made the comment when he was on Capitol Hill and he's speaking with lawmakers. He already said he would get rid of taxes on tips of service workers. So what do you think about Trump's plan to actually lower taxes to help the economy. Very kind of Reagan-esque here. Oh, yes, absolutely. Pleasure to be back with you, Lydia. And the article, actually, where you just showed the, the clip there that was 20% pr uh, prices rising under Biden, that was from Yahoo Finance. The reason that's really interesting is because that's not right-leaning. Mm -hmm. That's Yahoo's always known as a little bit more left-leaning. Prices rose only 7.8% under President Trump. And as that article states, 20% 20, 20 now under Biden. So now with regard to tariffs, yes, President Biden um, has obviously... the. the <laughs> proposes to raise taxes, and they would be 111 years ago, would be the last time they were this high. What is Trump proposing? Trump is proposing to raise tariffs. Now, the EU has a 10% tariff on American cars going into Europe. That's why I lived in Holland. I had a global business development for KPMG, lived in Amsterdam for three years, hardly ever saw an American car, and you don't see them in Germany. You see very few in England. Across the whole of the EU, 10% tar tariffs. In the US, only 2.5% tariffs on European cars. That's why you see a lot of Mercedes and Volkswagens and all of these international cars, particularly from Europe. Why? Because again, Volvo, Sweden, only 2.5%. So Trump is very smart to think of tariffs instead of income taxes. And income taxes were originally instituted for the Civil War to pay for the Civil War and then for the First World War. They weren't supposed to be in, in place permanently. And I think Trump is onto something here. Last but not least, mm -hmm. and what's it's because he relates to the average common man. Biden is to remove from that because his taxes, as I mentioned, would be the highest, his proposal, in 111 years. Americans don't want more taxes. Mm. And EJ, of course we don't. I, it just makes no sense. We know also where the Fed stands for the year. We should expect rates to stay at a 23-year high with a range of around five and a quarter to five and a half percent on, on the interest rates. But what does this mean? You know, for housing costs especially, people also can't get out of their starter homes. Uh, also, my property taxes are going up. I just actually went to the tax assessor's office to try to fight them. They're explaining to us it's because inventory is so low, uh, and we're right outside of New York City, so people are fleeing the city, coming to the suburbs right there. And so because the inventory low, the demand is high. But where am I supposed to move to, right, With, when, when interest rates are so high? So people can only buy if you have a lot of cash on hand. Exactly. Too much government spending has essentially frozen over this entire housing market. All of the trillions of dollars in excess government spending that we have seen over the last several years are what caused the 40-year high inflation. In response to that, interest rates had to rise. And as a consequence, as you just pointed out, Lydia, so many people, literally millions of Americans, are locked into their low-rate mortgage because if they try selling their home, they will lose their mortgage rate of 2 to 3% and have to get a new one 
of 7 to 8 percent. And they'll have to downsize because they simply won't be able to afford to borrow as much at these much higher interest rates. But at the same time, home builders are facing record high costs right now as a result of that same inflation. And so you're seeing reduced supply on both existing and new homes. So again, this housing market has essentially been completely frozen over and we have nothing to blame but excessive government spending. And I think also the de declaration of war in the fossil fuel industry. I think on day one in Joe Biden in office, he started all of this economic uh, collapse. EJ, Antoni, Hillary Fordwich, thank you guys so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you, Lydia. Bye, EJ. Thanks.